higher than the Hi, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is Fast Get Starfish, our language core. Today is my 57th episode. Uh, once again, uh, if I'm going too fast, please type in YouTube and um, the program name Fast Get Starfish, our language core, then you can watch all the other uh, past episodes. Today, I'm going to uh, shift a little bit between the liquid consonant, as I said last time, the L, M, N, and, and S, and, and then I will explain a little bit why the shape T is also kind of conceptually connected to those water and liquid uh, consonant. So I will start my episode now, uh, but I do need your flexibility to uh, shift from concept to concept because this, this was how human concept used to work and actually it still do and we just didn't pay as much attention to it as before, okay? So uh, I will start again from the beginning. And this is the uh, basket starfish, and uh, we are sharing this uh, common core, as I said. And every single uh, uh, so-called family is just a branch, nothing more than that. Okay, so we are not separate tree families. So we don't have those hierarchy that uh, that uh, we usher in, you know, with understanding every single one, you know, start from a different time because we start. Uh, all, we all started uh, at the same time uh, around the same core okay so I, w I wish this could be changed so a uh, human being can be all more on an equal ground okay so uh, my epi uh, my research uh, has been on for more than 20 years you know I'm presenting to you an Asian female perspective and also I base my sounds uh, on the Cantonese which is a very ancient southern Chinese dialect uh, the Mandarin sound I use it once in a while just to show you uh, the uh, comparison, okay? But the basic sound is Cantonese, okay? Um, first of all, uh, I've been talking uh, for two weeks about the liquid consonant, and then um, this sign, you have seen it again and again. First of all, you can understand it, you know, something coming out of the mouth, or you can look at it as a tongue, or you can uh, understand it as something falling from above, or you actually, you know, with the heart shape itself, you can actually understand it as the male uh, private part, the penis, and all the, you can uh, understand why the word stud is right there, because this is really in the shape of a stud, and then also uh, in the female side, this is also the shape of the uterus. So from the very beginning, you know, this uh, shape is shared between the ancient Sumerian and also ancient Chinese but um, of, of course you know if you talk about liquid it has to do with a lot of the L sound and L form this is a flow of the water so it, that's why you see the liquid the line the law even the law which flows from above um, and also the lingua which came from the the, the concept of the tongue uh, all uh, began with this L sound and I show you also this, you know, this is a, a very particular Chinese ancient word and it has to, a lot to do with giving birth as you can and also uh, to, to do with the origin. As you can see, you can take the big T as the shape of the uterus and also the T right there is really like the male stud that uh, goes in and to um, procreate, okay? So the ancients are very, very direct, direct and they are not you know, shy. They uh, uh, we're not trying to hide anything so you have to be really bold to understand all this you know so the patriarchs have uh, hide all these things you know for centuries so it takes a little bit of time for you to swallow you know how bold the ancient used to talk okay so again this is a Chinese uh, writing it has to do with the source the origin and also a lot to do with birth itself and then um, this one you know used in Chinese you know as you can see you can understand it's a liquid or whatever coming down it gradually become a, a written a law uh, or the canons that we need to follow so uh, the concept actually flips back and forth easily and this is the final uh, writing of that nowadays we still use this it's like you know what comes down from heaven okay it become you know the uh, determinative part in Chinese of any rights or, or law that we have to follow you know in terms of custom okay and um, and also you can see this T shape right there in this case you know it actually shows air coming out of the mouth 
mouth, you know, and all these, you know, have different sounds, you know, but I need you to understand the general concept of how each things uh, interchange. And this, I show you, this is a real uh, Sumerian pictograph. It, this is really means the tongue, and it carries the same sound as this, the, the me, uh, and you know that M is also related to water too. So uh, this is me, this, the tongue itself is M in uh, ancient Sumerian. You can see that clearly that is uh, the, 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 the symbol of the tongue, okay? And then as time went by, you know, our idea seem more complicated. This is the later Chinese uh, word really means tongue. You see the saliva coming out and then this is the mouth part and then it's like a snake's um, tongue. It comes in a frog shape, uh, in, in, in a fork shape. So um, it also uh, comes in this form and um, it also comes in this form but as you can see I will try to use it to compare to the Western alphabet because you know either this one the so you call the G I believe it was put there you know as a as a visual marker you know for the ancient Greek because these two uh, letters right there um, are actually the formation the two uh, initial letters of the word tongue glossa in um, ancient Greek okay so you can see that from the very beginning this frog uh, I mean this frog um, tongue is uh, have or is already there so so that's why you know all the devils at the very beginning were in the shape of a snake okay that's how their tongue was shaped you know so um, you can see how the ancient was trying to uh, refer to their real life and also again you know look at this Chinese you know it, it actually you know uh, shows a very negative way of speaking and then this is also uh, the uh, ancient Greek letter ps. and of course you know this letter is an initial part of the word life so though uh, now the English word is so though right so this is the beginning part of the the Greek word so both of this you know is actually uh, like to sh uh, sharing their very similar negative idea of speech so uh, when you can speak you can also lie okay so you will see that these are very very similar and as I said from today I want you to look at this T form now instead of the, the letter uh, connecting to water I want to to see that there are many different way of looking at the heart symbol okay you can look at it as turning around and of course, you know, uh, after you watch this program, you'll understand why the word tell or the tongue or the word turn or the trail or the Torah, uh, the, the, the Hebrew uh, uh, law Bible. And it's also started with all these, you know, you will see that this is actually a visual symbol from the very beginning. So again, you know, you have to understand the flexibility of forms and sounds. The more simple a form is, the more versatile it is in in, in Leading to our human concepts. So uh, I will um, show you again, you know, this quick map of uh, the natural sound shifting. Last week I showed you this to show you that the liquid water, um, I mean the liquid consonant, the L, M, N and the R, and also the water, they always flex between these few uh, uh, consonants. And then also because of the W, the semi-vowel, it also goes to the U and from the U it sometimes go to the E so um, actually there is no uh, fixed border so if you look at the sound shifting it is really like a whole uh, bunch of uh, threads all mixed together okay so um, again you know but today I want to show you you know that how this uh, sound also runs to other direction through the concept shifting first of all um, again I want to enforce this you see this is the Phoenician N or L this is the uh, Hebrew L and you will see that in nature itself this is how the concept forms either it is the water because in Greek you have this narrow which is water and then the the Nilo as actually is the ancient word for the Nile for river and it become the name of the Nile River and of course the N and the L and the R all interchange as well and then um, the concept of this curving thing other than the road and all also it become the rope also and and of course the the symbol is n right there the nema and uh, it's thread in greek as well and as i said uh, before uh, nim is also a word of 
in the Cantonese uh, talking about using the finger to trill thread okay and um, you see the L you can also understand it other than the tongue you can understand is the water flowing into different tributary uh, lino become the word linen and also of course the concept of a rope with this curving sign and the other of course you know the uh, universal sharing uh, consonant for the snake is always the S but today I'm not going to talk about the S but as you see uh, the S also has a lot to do with water but I want to you to pay attention to the Greek L which is actually you can transfer it to the tongue of the snake which has a lot to do with what we are talking about today and the other thing with the curving line you know what the ancient always see other than they are very very similar these are the lane the line and also because of the interchange of sound that's how your, your row the root uh, came from and also because of the uh, ra and the wa had become the way but today you will see how uh, the word English the English word trail came to be okay so once again all this either is liquid line or it, it become curving become the root of the way you will see that um, this is the Phoenician L Phoenician M this is Greek uh, I mean this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph M this is a big volume of water this is the Phoenician N which correspond to the uh, ancient uh, Egyptian hieroglyph N which is a smaller body of water so um, and, uh, with this it will also L will be a shifting to our la uh, la and but then it has to do with uh, if you pay attention to this you will see that these water kind of flowing uh, swiftly uh, like a line by and but this r begins to have like a world uh, wrong shape okay so um the, this I, I show you before you know the greek r is like a p form the uh, latin got the form just because you know there's a line flowing out of, from the greek r so it becomes the Latin R form and then of course if you go back to the Greek the R is actually you draw us like a circle a curving form okay and then uh, the, the W also either than the concept change either than the sound change to la, ra, and wa and it also is a conceptual change other than the W that uh, that follow this ancient hieroglyph and then the other way of uh, understanding the, the wrong is the well okay so the water not flowing as a straight line this time the water is whirling around like a whirl okay so uh, now I will show you a bunch of what the um, the, con uh, the scholars call the consonant clusters now you understand why the L appear in a lot of these words whenever you see the L it is like a flow of some kind of liquid and whenever you see the R it's not a smooth flow it is some kind of a, uh, a whirling motion so it can uh, flow a little bit more uh, difficulty like the gland is more flow faster and the Greek should be flow flowing a little bit slower so you will see that why the L and the R the ancient seem to have a very particular idea of describing every single little thing they saw in life okay so even the word glide why is the L there uh, well there whenever you want something to go smoother you either add water or you add oil okay so all these are to do with the L or the W or, or, or the R okay so now uh, it also uh, transfer easily you know into the idea of the thread because of the line so th there was, that's why where the R is because all this thread the strain on the strand they all have to be uh, per to perform a circular motion in order to trail a thread okay so today we're uh, going to look at the religious sense of the trail the track and the street and the traffic okay why religious sense you will see later why the Torah become okay and then the also the Chinese Taoism the Tao okay so uh, once again um, this is uh, another uh, uh, extension of those uh, sound con shifting but then I will explain to you because the sound shift also sometimes it incorporates some concept shifting either than this uh, what we are looking at today either than the M N L R and W and and then of course you know from here it this it has a little 
circle right there it has a lot to do with the speech words okay and then but then today we actually focus more in this R W D and T how come this will uh, be connected it all connected to the circular motion I will give you some English word to guide you through first of all understand it's a round or the well and then the dado and then also the tour because if I look up the ancient writings you can find them easily this is the Greek word uh, R this is the uh, ancient Egyptian W sound as which is turning around and this is also the Chinese W Woi or Wan this is also exactly looks the same 300 3500 3, years ago Chinese so you will see that they were short sharing the same sound you know and then the same idea and from here this is a P or the F uh, letter of the uh, uh, Hebrew alphabet so you will see that the PF is also right here but the PF is also has a lot to do with the uh, trailing motion so you will see that in a certain level the concept did meet in the ancient time okay and then uh, once again the uh, today I concentrate a little bit in this form uh, first of all you can look at it again if it's a hot uh, symbol you can look at it as a tongue you can understand it as the idea of something uh, some something coming out from the mouth you can understand something falling from above or you can understand it as the form of a stud you know the penis or you can understand as the female uterus where they are the form like that with the uh, with the baby coming down okay and the other way of course is like this when something really comes down and then uh, the other way of looking at it is when it really making a tour turning around like when you're turning a, a tornado okay so you will see that even a tornado uh, coincide with this uh, kind of a law of making up words since ancient time okay so now let's look at it as a tongue and the tongue in a way means Means language so um, the ancient Sumerian has a sound of meh and I will show you the other pictograph uh, obviously this is to, to say meh um, for this this is a very abstract uh, symbol it means you know the ability to give life but then uh, you will see that the ancient Sumerian have this as tongue but as you will, can uh, remember uh, the uh, Bible started with God you know blowing out something from their mouth this is also you know already correspond with the very ancient idea that the uh, origin of gas or air uh, started to, to the beginning of creation okay so of course you know it become like this it be has the sound of M you will see that M and M and then of course the uh, Chinese have a whole set of this as I said it has the sound of Li, li or Ni and it has uh, it has to do with uh, what is uh, coming down from heaven and then it actually become the law and the custom to follow in Chinese and then the M and the L is also the water consonant and Akkadian you will see very clearly the mouth inside the mouth this is the tongue but they have the sound of Lisanu or Lishanu and then uh, this is actually uh, carry on in different languages and um, and but this uh, sound change is uh, quite obvious because the L changed to an N because Nis is actually the word for uh, tongue in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph once again it seems that the Egyptian uh, used the snake tongue to represent the tongue itself so at the beginning it might not be that negative but as time went by as we give a very negative message meaning to the snake so it become negative as well okay so um, uh, look at the Chinese we also have a frog tongue and then uh, we have the words uh, we have we follow the sound of S or the Z which is part of this but in in a way in Cantonese we never use this word in colloquial way when we when we speak in Cantonese we always use the sound lay exactly as Lishanu right there lay okay so um, as you will see um, that um, 
right here, this is a very interesting coincidence for the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. And the knees is, means the tongue. And when it uh, becomes this sound in me and the R plus an R, it becomes the uh, overseer. As you can see, it seems that the Egyptian hieroglyph followed the sound of the Sumerian, but have this, uh, the uh, meaning of the uh, someone who has the authority to speak. Okay, let's look at Chinese. For some reason the Chinese follow the same line and you see this is the tongue this is the ancient writing someone holds the authority of the tongue and uh, the sound is lay for us it exactly means the overseer and you will see that it seems that the ancient Egyptian have the same uh, tradition as the Chinese whoever has the authority to speak is the overseer okay so um, and when I look at the up the word to look and the, to oversee and then our Chinese song is actually see is exactly like when you speak English see okay so what is this person looking at look at that symbol right there. This is kind of a symbol of the law right there. He is the or he or she is the overseer of that law, you know, using that symbol. And I can also go back to ancient uh, Sumerian. This is actually the symbol of the eye and the look. Look at that. If I just turn 90 degrees, this become the Chinese and this also match with the ancient Chinese. You know, this is the ancient way of talking telling you that you know this is something to 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 follow okay to pay attention to and then uh, uh, how do you, did the Greek do it the Greek actually put the two sign look at this fork tongue right there and then they put the other one uh, one is the G G sign in uh, Egyptian I mean uh, Greek and the other is the L and they actually become glosser in and become the English word glossary okay but for Greek they mean this means tongue it seems that they use this you know as a visual indicator of what they are they were looking at okay now let's look at the sound of tongue and the Basque which uh, all the language said that is an isolated language look at that this is the word of tongue either it's Layla or the Mihi either it followed the uh, Egyptian I mean the Sumerian sound or it followed the Akkadian and also the Chinese sound so it seems to me that they are not that isolated at all okay and latin of course lingua become the the tongue and become the 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 word language okay and french is long and then german lush or oh, it become you know very similar to this if you hear in real life and even some oceanic language like the hawaii look at that lelo and then uh, with a change, you know, of alphabet, a shifting of sound, the Maui become Arero. So look at that. They are all following the same tradition since very ancient time. So now let's look at uh, look it uh, as the instruction from above, okay? So this is the tongue. I will show you all the different writing, uh, either the L sound or the N sound. This is Phoenician, this is Greek, this is Greek, this is Chinese, tongue, this is Chinese, and this is also Chinese. Look at that, it's always a line, a curving line coming from above, or a line forking out, you know, uh, telling something, okay? This is the symbol of tongue, and then look at that, this is the Chinese word, uh, uh, lai, and then it is a ritual, the custom to follow, the L and the R interchange look at that somehow the Chinese actually write an L right there okay so uh, this is something to follow a canon to follow exactly like the uh, 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 Hebrew halak you know and then this is something uh, to flow or a path to follow of course you know the halak is there uh, the, the Hebrew law that you have to follow okay so the other Greek word is now they use the N uh, symbol right there it's something to flow so you will see very interesting either they were using the river flow or they were using the the, the, the trail to follow you know as a as a um, metaphor for all these laws that you have to follow let's look at all these uh, words about law latin lex you know spanish lay and this is uh, loi from french you know law is actually water and of course come to the english law and then the normals become the english word norm 
and then the lexi, lexi and become the uh, word lexicon all about words you know but all these words actually coming from above okay so it become the written law itself and then of course the logos you know uh, of course the explanation will be the word of God and of course the way to follow and of course that become the law also as a concept okay so Let's, let's look at the T form as the turn, okay? So now Tao, that's the word Tao, that's the symbol Tao, as you can see, you know, you think it's Phoenician alphabet, the last alphabet in Phoenician, but I will show you a bunch of that in a religious sense. You will see how much similarity all languages share, okay? This is a Chinese word Dou, okay? For, and this is also Dou. For us, we use it differently. One is actually used in a Taoism, in a pathway, the other one is to lead okay so you will see the meaning right there and then if we use it as a Taoism look at the Tao in the Taoism and then we have the word Tao okay Tao actually also means the road the root and which correspond to the uh, Greek word Odos Odos is also means the street the road the way and this is exactly the word used in the Bible to mean Jesus to mean the way okay so of course you know the rush in uh, Hebrew it means to tread, to follow, to worship, something to follow, to worship, okay? And direct actually, and also in Hebrew means to roll, a mode of custom, the course of life. This is also the way, the custom to follow in order to be a good person, okay? The direct become a tarek in, in, he, in, I mean in Arabic, and this is religiously used as the roll, the way, and this is used in the Quran, okay? And then, of course, you know, in Hebrew, you can also have this top and it actually means to return and to turn and the taru now you have to pay attention to this very interesting symbol it means a turn a tour okay and as I said this uh, in ancient time all languages use you know the bull head as a symbol of unseen energy this has a word stu and it means turning around or it means uh, walking around uh, you can use the foot too this is Chinese when in Chinese in Cantonese we use Tao to mean to make a circle. So religiously, you use this dervish in the Sufism and the Muslim, they keep turning around to achieve this uh, unity with God. Okay? So if you look at all this, you will see that how closely related we are in all ancient religion. It all came out from one sing, uh, single core. Okay? So uh, I wish you can understand how I compare the